afternoon. Thanks for calling. Hey, it's Jasmine. Hey, Jazz. How are you? <laughs> good. Pretty good. Are you busy? I got a few moments. Just got off the phone. You called it proper timing. You just must have known. So you're working on a complex yeah, right. deal there, correct? I mean, it, this this lady has had multiple wholesalers try to sell it. It's been on the market like four times. No one's buying it. And you say it's worth 90 Is that correct? If it's fixed up, it'll be worth 90 And she owes how much? She owes 30000 to get it fixed will be around 40000 give or take. There's a tree, like, indenting the side of the house, and it really needs to be looked at by an engineer because I'm not sure, like, how big Is she is. living in the house or is it vacant? No, it's it's completely empty. It's been abandoned. It's been sitting there, I think she said, for, like, five years. It's trashed. And it has an in-ground pool, but the in-ground pool – it still has water in it, so mm, it's, it's for five years, life. yuck. Yeah, I know. Okay, and then also so ninety thousand ARV, thirty thousand dollar loan, and she's paying how much a month? Nine oh one. Nine hundred bucks a month. P I T I that's principal interest taxes and insurance, correct? Yeah. Okay. And so what did what did you have planned for? What what are you trying to do with this house? I'm just trying to see if there's any way that I can make something off of this house. And what does she want? She doesn't want anything. She just wants to get rid of it. So she's fine taking the amount that's owed. She's so paying she's for been, it out of her alimony. So she's tired of paying that 901 a month, every month, on, on a vacant house. Yep. So is she, uh, I guess, so what options have you presented her or have you presented her any options? I just asked her if she knew about a short sale. She said that she doesn't think her husband is going to be okay with that. I think that's because she doesn't really understand what a short sale is. Oh, so there's a husband involved as well. So you got two decision it's, makers. It's, yeah, the mortgage is in her ex-husband's name. She's been paying on it. So I'm assuming they used to live there whenever they got, broke up. They probably just moved out and it's been sitting ever since. The mortgage is in his name, but apparently it's her house. Right. Okay. So mortgage in his name, house in her name. Mm -hmm. Is it she behind or anything, or is it current? She's telling me that it's current. She just doesn't want to pay on it anymore. Well, I wouldn't want to either. You know, nine hundred dollars a month. That's a lot of money. That's uh, what? Too much. Yeah. Like, yeah. Now, mind you, like there's there have been really big wholesalers who've tried to do something with this, and they have all failed. Well, that's why you got a professional on the phone. We're not wholesalers. We make deals happen. This is what we do. You ready to make yeah, some deals? Like it's, it's, I think it's been listed over and over again for about like a year almost. And the people who are listing it are wholesalers. They're wholesalers in their license. Yeah, so that's why, you know, uh, most of the deals I come across that are the best deals are deals that a wholesaler can't touch, deals that a real estate agent can't touch because they don't know how to do it. There's a way to make this deal work if the seller is reasonable. So, um, she, with the mortgage, she, just, she doesn't want anything for it. Yeah, she wants to stop taking that payment. Um, are you familiar with doing a subject to deal? Okay, I am a little bit familiar with it. The only thing about it is what I'm used to seeing, you know, on the videos are houses that don't really need much work. Well, you know, there's a way to do it. It's that, that the subject to is only for the, um, you know, the way to acquire the property. And, you know, you have a separate exit strategy, which, you know, what state are you in? New Jersey. New Jersey. Jersey Shore. So, um, Man, Jersey. Jersey <laughs> no one from Jersey talks like that. Those are people from Jersey that Shore. Night. You know how you guys talk. Come on. So, <laughs> I cannot even replicate Can't that. Can't even act. try that. <laughs> <laughs> Jersey Shore. All right, so let's see here. So the wife is tired of making this payment. Um, you know, for a subject to deal, it is possible. But the thing is, um, do you have this house under contract in any way, shape, or form? No, but it will be easy, too. I just haven't done that yet because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to do what everyone else has done, get it under contract, and they really cannot do anything with it. They just put it on the market, and it sits. 
because we're not putting it on the market like that. We're going to put it out on a rent-to-own lease option fixer-upper handyman special with financing. Have you heard of those? Yes. So that's well, a, I mean, about no, I haven't only... really heard of sub twos with you know fixing it up. So subject two is only the entry point. That's just one side of the transaction. That's just acquiring the property. Lease option is how you exit the strategy, which is not the exit strategy to any of those people you've named, i.e. the wholesaler or the real estate agents or any of those other people have attempted to do, correct? Um, I, I don't believe they attempted to do that. Because somebody could possibly buy this house, you know, it would have to be a contractor or somebody who could do the work, sweat equity that doesn't have to pay the 40000 in repairs. Maybe they put 20 in it and they do the, most of the work themselves. You see what I'm saying? So to reduce those yeah. numbers on the repair part, because, you know, who's going to pay forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on fixing up a house? Now, is it even realistic to save this house or is this possibly a teardown? Oh, it's definitely – okay, so the structure of the house is fine. Like, it, it is, it, besides the part where the tree is at. It's just – it's on, like, a hill, like, kind of, like, a really big hill. Like, a kid could definitely get – they would die if they, like, fell off the side of that cliff. It's, like, on a cliff. Whoa. Yeah, it, it, it's it's bad. Like, my brother, he is a contractor, and I brought him there, like, like six months ago because she called me about it. And then some, and then she had somebody else put it under contract. But it, it needs, like, some type of gating around it. Um it's also a house that's not on a regular road. It's like a, it was like a, it's not regular pavement. It's kind of like a dirt road. And there's only like three houses back there. And all of them are not like public water or public sewer. They all have their own like well and stuff like that. So that's why yeah, so. It, it's like so bad because it's not normal for the area that it's in for it to be like that. Right, right. So, well, there's a couple of ways that, I mean, it seems, you know, depending on the seller and how motivated they are, which they sound pretty motivated, the only oh, extra yeah, strategy that would make sense to me. As it can get. Yeah, because they, they run across a bunch of people who couldn't help them. But now they got somebody who knows how to help them. You have to solve, be a problem solver. The more problems you solve, the more money you make. So, um, like I said, a, a subject two would be about the only way that would make sense, you know, either that or some type of a sandwich lease option, but I would prefer to always close and own the, hop, the property. I don't necessarily look for leases. I look for own ownership so you get all the tax benefits and all the other stuff. So um, if they were willing to keep that loan in their name, which is the only way that this would make sense, which I guess the husband wouldn't care because he's not going to object because she's making a payment anyway. If the mortgage is in yeah. his name, um, if somebody exactly. was to take that payment of 901 a month, what would it rent for if it was a uh, you know, in rent condition. It, 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 from my opinion, and I think my opinion is pretty strong, thirteen hundred. So you could possibly get somebody in there give you, you know, maybe a five thousand dollar down payment or something to that effect, or more. You know, I, when I put these deals out, I don't know if you studied most of the videos I put out. I don't speak a lot of numbers. I put a price out and I ask questions instead of you know trying to interject what I know, what I think, you know, because what I think is just what I think, but I want to know what the, uh, you know, the person that's spending money thinks, you know, how much are you willing to put down towards a down payment? I ask a tenant buyer or something like that, and they might say, well, I have 5000 to put down, and I can do all the work. Somebody can move into that house, that $5,000 goes straight into Hip Pocket National Bank, which is your pocket, and, uh, you know, something to that effect, and we get them in the house, and they would have to do all the work. But like I said, the person that would the end buyer for this house would have to be somebody who can handle that type of volume and repairs. It could be another investor, or it could be a uh, you know a person who wants to live there. You see what I'm saying? But yeah. that loan would need to stay in place because that's where the money's messed up at. So say somebody gives you, like I said, five grand down. I'm just throwing a number out there. Five grand down. You sell the house at say fifty thousand, or even forty, just a little bit. It don't have to be marked up much more than what the loan is. Because that, you know, like I said, that, that five grand will go straight in your pocket. And then say if they were to make that, I don't know, $1,300 a month payment or less. As long as it's over that 901, you're good. The more over that 901, if the passive cash flow that goes straight into your pocket while you wait, you let the, the, the wife keep the loan in her name and you let the, uh, the uh, tenant buyer make that payment. Now, this is a more advanced strategy. And, you know, there's some other little things that you would have to do to make something like this work. That's why it's so important to gain the knowledge to learn how to do these deals, these creative type deals. 
That's why I created that woke real estate investors group on Facebook so people can learn this stuff because, um, you know, yeah. there's ways to make this work. Is that is this stuff sound kind of far outlandish to you or is this some stuff that you think no, you can I, learn yeah, how I, to I'm do? Following, I, I, I'm so following. It's just a lot at once. <laughs> like it is. Yeah, it is kind of a lot. Yeah. Yeah, kind of overwhelming. Like, so what happens if someone doesn't pay, you know? <laughs> well, if they don't pay, you get them up out of there. That's why we do a lease option. You have a lease with an option to buy. They're not necessarily buying it. They would have to eventually go get a loan to, uh, you know, cash it out and uh, have their own mortgage or whatever they want to do at that point. Because, uh, yeah. you know, the loan, I mean, I guess they've been in that house for quite a while or something, evidently, if they only owe 30000 Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, so, I, I mean, so. Yeah, so even if somebody was to go get a loan, I mean, they should be, you know, if they bought the house, say, for 50000 and I'm just throwing a number out there, say they buy it for fifty, they you owe 30 on the underlying loan, they give you five grand down, they go in, do all the work themselves, and, uh, you know, that's, you get that spread on the front end, you get that down payment, you get the passive cash flow in the middle while you wait, the difference between the 901 and the 1300 or whatever you get, over 901 and you get a cash out on the back end if they decide to actually go get a loan so i mean it could be a win-win-win situation if you knew how to structure it so that's yeah why, i was gonna you say know. do you think someone would really uh pay so much higher than you know at what it could rent for not having any issues it depends you know you don't know what the marketplace would sustain you don't even have to necessarily do a cash flow you can put it out at 950 a month or anything you know it don't have to be the full 1300 or anything so it's a couple yeah. of strategies that you can do to make this work you know as long as you sell it for more than what you that she owes and you know hopefully get a passive cash flow more than a cash flow more than what she's paying every month and somebody to go in there and do all their own sweat equity fix her up her handyman special blast it all over the internet and somebody will move right in there and drop you a down payment and take that payment over for you I mean, like I said, it's yeah. a more advanced strategy, but, I mean, it's very important to learn, you know, this type of strategy because, like I said, a wholesaler can't touch it. A real estate agent definitely couldn't touch it. And most people who deal in real estate are like, what are you talking about? You can do that? Yes, you can do a lot of things once you learn how to do them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, it does sound so complicated. They don't teach you this stuff in a real estate school. <laughs> this is the school of hard yeah. knocks on the street. Chris Monroe <laughs> So, I mean, yeah. does that sound like that's something too outlandish for you to uh, kind of figure out? I learned how to do it in two weeks. So, I mean, it's not necessarily that you can't learn it. It can be done if you want to do it. I mean, and this, you're going to come across deals like this all the time that nobody can touch, and you're the, you're the only one that can save them because you know how to do it and nobody else does. <sighs> yeah, I know. But it all depends on your strength level. Can you roll this boat? Can you be – the one who steers this vehicle down the highway without crashing. Honestly, I'm not even sure. All I know is I could try it. Okay. Do you have the proper contracts and things like that to do a, a subject to type deal? Um, no, but I mean, I'm sure I could find one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause like I say, this is a more advanced strategy. You know, this could not, you know, when you buy this house, it would not be able to close it in your name. It would have to close into a trust because that would, you know, basically avoid the do on sale clause that everybody's so afraid of because it would be illegal yeah, for the bank okay. to call that loan due or accelerate that mortgage if you close it in a trust. So Yeah, yeah, be, I remember you told me before. Yeah, that's why wow, you got to know that. these strategies. Yeah, it makes a difference. I wouldn't put a property in my name anyway, no matter what the situation was, from the information I've gathered studying from the greats. So, um, yeah. you know, I don't know if this is too too much for you, but, I mean, that's about the only extra strategy that I see that makes sense. I would put it under contract for the, uh, you know, subject to the existing financing with that 901 payment um, for the amount that they owe, approximately $30,000. Um, I would go out, put find me a end buyer, fix a rupper, blast that thing all over, all over the Internet, Facebook, Craigslist, offer up, let go, you name it. Find me somebody who wants to move in there as a uh, you know a handyman special that's exactly what it is even if somebody gave you three grand down you know that will cover your closing costs because that's what you would have some closing costs to make this deal work are you able to pay yeah. some closing costs to, to close this deal out w without using the end buyer's money uh I, i'm i'm not sure it depends how much it would be 
Yeah, I'm not sure what it would cost there. I mean, I don't think it would be more than two thousand dollars, probably less than that on this small amount of money. But I don't know. New Jersey might be a little expensive. That's East Coast. That's kind of a blue state, so y'all probably have hell to do anything. <laughs> no. Yeah. no I, I think it depends like on what the total cost of the house is. Yeah, and it's thirty thousand, so that's it's not too much. So I mean I would be surprised if it was over two thousand bucks. But, yeah. you know, like I would say, I would go do some, like, deep dive studying and learning how to do subject two. Um, and, uh, you know, that's just the entry point. And like I said, it's a separate transaction for the exit point. And you don't have to necessarily close on the property. You can use the end buyer's money to close the deal out. But you do need to get it under contract, um, you know, if you're planning on doing something with this, as you probably know. Because you are a, li- a licensed agent, correct? Yes. Yeah. That's right. You must disclose that. I'm a licensed agent, and I'm scared I'm going yeah, to lose my license by doing this creative stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. So I hope that uh, kind of helps you shoot you in the right direction. Did you have any other questions for me? I mean, no, that was that was really that was really helpful. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a creative deal. You know, you have to really get creative, and everything they taught you in school does not. I mean, it applies, but it really does not apply to this stuff. That's why I studied from. Yeah, no, I know. It's You'll never even separate. hear half this stuff in mainstream. <laughs> but it right. makes so much money. How many houses could you buy if you can get them all like this for just closing costs? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, a hundred houses a year, easily. So that's one of the little nuggets that should help you uh, move this deal along. If you have any hiccups or problems or questions, you know how to reach me. All right. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. All right. You too. Bye-bye.